For centuries, humans have faced a culinary and olfactory dilemma. Although we consider asparagus a delicious delicacy, it has a troublesome tendency to endow our urine with a rather malodorous bouquet. Indeed, scholars such as Benjamin Franklin recorded their remarks on the effect that asparagus exerts on urine, perhaps the most poetic description being Proust's observation that they played at transforming my humble chamber into a bower of aromatic perfume. For those who smell the distinctive odor, it must seem that, as Louis Lemery wrote in 1702, because they cause a filthy and disagreeable smell in the urine, as everybody knows. But the question remains, do they? Do you smell that? You smell what? Oh, it's so putrid. Oh, it's awful. Despite the words of Lemery, a question persists. Can everyone smell asparagus pee? If not, why? To solve this medical mystery, a team of researchers from Boston and across Europe teamed up to answer that very question. The inspiration for our study uh, came about during a scientific meeting uh, in Grititan, Sweden, in 2010. Uh, we were with colleagues uh, from Sweden, Ireland, Iceland, and uh, the U.S., and we were sitting down for a dinner of the new spring asparagus, and we were very excited to have dinner together. Uh, we took a bite of, of the asparagus, and somehow we started uh, talking about the funny odor uh, that would happen uh, very soon after eating the, uh, after eating the asparagus. Well, when we said this uh, to our Swedish colleagues, they were really surprised and had no idea what we were talking about. And in fact, our colleagues from Iceland and from Ireland also had no idea what we were talking about. So this really created some interest in us to try to understand uh, the scientific basis for why some of us could smell and others couldn't, the strong odor that takes place after you eat asparagus. So foundational research in this area has demonstrated that the prevalence of the inability to smell the odor produced in urine after eating asparagus, or asparagus anosmia, differs within individuals and across populations. And studies have also shown that people who cannot smell the odor in their own urine are also unable to smell the odor in the urine of known producers. So this suggests a potential genetic component. And in fact, a study done in 2010 identified a single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP, that was associated with asparagus anosmia. So when we returned from Sweden, uh, our group sat down together to figure out how we might be able to study uh, whether there's additional genetic factors that underlie this asparagus anosmia. At the Harvard uh, Chan School of Public Health, uh, we work with two uh, large cohorts of men and women, uh, the uh, health professionals follow-up study and the nurses health study. So within these two cohorts, uh, there was av available genetic data. So we were excited to find out that we could add a supplemental question um, and ask individuals in these two cohort studies about whether they can smell asparagus. Well, this asparagus looks pretty good. Uh, do you mind if I try one as I pass it around? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, help yourself. Thank you. I'm good for now. Looks great. It's too bad asparagus has that unfortunate smell. Wait, what do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Not me either. Oh, I, I mean, don't you smell that, you know, when you go to the bathroom after? So in, in 2010, uh, we sent a supplemental questionnaire uh, to the men and women uh, in these cohort studies and asked them whether they agree or disagree with the following statement. After eating asparagus, you notice a strong characteristic odor in your urine. For their primary analysis, we considered participants who responded that they strongly agreed with the statement as being able to smell the metabolites of asparagus in their urine and everybody else as being and asparagus anosmic. 
We had questionnaire data and genome-wide association study data available for 6,909 men and women in these cohort studies. And then we teamed up with Peter Kraft, who's a professor of epidemiology at the Harvard Chan School, and whose research concentrates on the design and analysis of genetic association studies to employ a GWAS analysis to elucidate the genetic underpinnings of asparagus anosmia. So for our analyses, we conducted logistic regression models using the individual SNPs as the exposure and asparagus anosmia as the outcome. We calculated per allele, meaning that each person could have as few as zero copies of the allele and as many as two copies of the allele estimates and considered p-values less than 5 times 10 to the minus 8 as genome-wide significant. To further explore the complex nature of genetic variation in asparagus anosmia, we conducted conditional analyses, which allow us to, allows us to include all of the SNPs in a model and take into account the correlation between SNPs. Finally, we used a tool called Polyfen to predict the likelihood that some of the SNPs we found would be probably damaging, meaning there was a high confidence that the SNPs alter protein function or structure, probably damaging, or benign, meaning it most likely lacks any phenotypic effect. What is a GWAS? That's a great question. So a GWAS is a genome-wide association study. It's a, te a technique that allows researchers to scan the genome to identify genetic differences among individuals that are uh, correlated with differences in traits, like height, or risk of cancer, or the ability to smell asparagus. So in this particular case, we collected blood samples from nurses and health professionals, extracted the DNA from the blood samples, and then measured those DNA samples for 10 million variants, about, uh, across the genome, and then just simply asked, are those variants correlated with the ability to smell asparagus, yes or no? With respect to our results, we found that overall, 60% of participants, including 58% of men and 62% of women, were anosmic. We found 871 SNPs reached genome-wide significance for asparagus anosmia. What we see here is a figure called the Manhattan plot, and on the y-axis displays the p-values, and across the x-axis are the individual chromosomes. Each dot is a SNP laid out across the chromosomes from left to right. The height of the peaks corresponds to the strength of the association with asparagus anosmia. So here we can see that the most statistically significant SNPs, with several with p-values less than 10 to the minus 40 or smaller, are in a similar region on chromosome 1, which contains genes in the olfactory receptor family. Using conditional analyses, we found three independent SNPs located in olfactory receptor genes that remain statistically significantly associated with asparagus anosmia. And finally, we found SNPs located in genes in the olfactory receptor family that were probably or potentially damaging based on high polyphen scores. In summary, 60% of our participants were unable to smell the strong odor produced in urine after eating asparagus. Genetic variation near multiple genes in the olfactory receptor 2 family were associated with the ability to smell the strong and characteristic odor in urine. Our study was focused in a European-American um, population, and it will be important to try to replicate these findings in uh, populations of different ethnicities in order both to identify the prevalence of asparagus anosmia in these populations, as well as whether the same or different genetic variants are associated with this, this unique trait. There's several outstanding questions that remain on our research. Uh, first and foremost, perhaps, is why such a delicious delicacy as asparagus results in such a pernicious odor? Why does genetic variation across the olfactory receptor genes exist that lead to susceptibility to asparagus anosmia? It's really interesting to think what are the selective pressures, one way or the other, that would drive different populations to be able to smell or not smell these asparagus metabolites. And will scientists take the results of our study and apply gene editing techniques to convert smellers to non-smellers? For those of you who are not anosmic, including Lorelai and myself, we hope that this doesn't deter you from eating the delicious delicacy as asparagus. So this holiday season, try your favorite asparagus recipe and generate a provocative discussion with your loved ones about 
the filthy and disagreeable odor in your urine. Make sure to serve the entire plant to protect your liver against toxic insults. Enjoy your holiday nights and potentially alleviate next day remnants of holiday cheer. Happy holidays.